A couple months back, my friend George and I were filling out the calendar we use for releases to figure out what movies we're going to review on our podcast. He sent over the trailer for Unsane, and I really couldn't figure out why at first. It had a super lo-fi look and everything, and just it didn't look like a theatrical movie. But then I noticed that A, it was directed by Steven Soderbergh, and it starred Claire Foy, and I kind of started to pay more attention. So if you've never heard of this movie before, it's about a woman named Sawyer Valentini who moves from Boston to Pennsylvania to take on a new job and to avoid a stalker because that's a pretty good reason to move state to state if you ask me. Once she gets there though she kind of keeps seeing him everywhere so she goes to a mental hospital to talk to a therapist there and then she accidentally ends up committing herself for at least 24 hours. Now the big talking point about this movie for better or worse is that except for a couple drone shots here and there in the movie it was shot entirely on an iPhone 7 plus and these three moment lenses with an app called Filmic Pro. I have an iPhone I already had Filmic Pro and I borrowed these lenses from work because I decided it'd be fun to shoot this review with the exact same equipment that Steven Soderbergh used to shoot his theatrical film. So I just switched over to the 18 millimeter wide angle lens and that's because it's the standard lens that was used to shoot most of this movie. Now something I really wanted to know going in was whether or not this was just going to be a gimmick or a genuinely cool new way to shoot a horror movie. Image quality is solid but the technology shows its limitations primarily in the first act. I'm sure you've seen this effect before but when you try to track someone who's moving the camera will sometimes drop frames and struggle to keep focus on the subject. Also, even though you're putting a lens over it, the iPhone's lens is still there, so sometimes shot look flat and a little shallow. It only really happens though before Sawyer's in the hospital, and Soderbergh smartly made sure to get her in there within the first 10 or 15 minutes. The color grading also gets a little weird at times, and there are a couple scenes set during the night in a forest, but I'm almost positive they were shot during the day, since you can see the sun hitting the ground in spots through the trees, despite the dark blue overlay. Finally, while the 16 and 60 millimeter lenses look nice, I could have done without most of the shots where Soderbergh used the 15 millimeter superfish lens, which looks pretty bad. It gets really soft around the edges and it was just straight up distracting. The hospital itself is a great setting. The lighting and set decoration aren't overproduced in any way, and the people working there, while sometimes a little shaky, act their parts well enough that when you combine it with the lo-fi look of the iPhone camera, it really sells it as a believable setting. And as for why the hospital staff is able to keep Sawyer there against her will, I was and still am surprised at how much sense it makes, and I don't want to spoil it, but it adds another layer of genuine creepiness to the film. The biggest surprise with Unsane is thanks to the trailer, which makes you think that this is going to be a psychological thriller that makes your head spin and then you'll be thinking about it for four days after. Thankfully that's not the case which makes me happy. This is a horror movie down to its core. The only issue I had with the plot setup is a super minor spoiler but skip ahead to the time code on the screen if you don't want to hear it. Three, two, one. All right, so it turns out that Claire's stalker, David Strine, who's played by Joshua Leonard, has managed to get a job at the hospital under a fake name. He kills the guy who he's taken the identity of, but the chances of him finding a guy whose first day at work just happened to be the day after Sawyer admitted herself is a little far-fetched. Leonard plays his part as the villain perfectly, and most of the scares involve him, which is good because he is extremely creepy. Things come to a head in the third act after a false ending, and Sawyer ends up trapped in his trunk, but instead of just flailing around and screaming like she would in any other movie, she reaches for that escape cable inside the trunk that most cars have and manages to escape at least momentarily. I also want to point out how great the performances are from the main cast. Claire Foy's Boston accent is so good that I couldn't believe she's actually English, and SNL's Jay Farrow gives off a super charming and funny performance that I keep going back and forth on which character I liked better. Soderbergh doesn't shy away from humor, and while some of the jokes fall just a little flat, they add levity in just the right moment. The biggest problem with Unsane is the dialogue though, especially when Sawyer is talking to her mom. It felt like there were just few too many words in every sentence, if that makes sense. I think certain conversations were improvised when they probably, or I guess definitely shouldn't have been, because those were the only moments where I felt like I was watching a movie and not looking through a window into this woman's life. I think it's so awesome that despite the technical limitations of, you know, shooting on an iPhone, Unsane ended up being one of the most effective and actually scary horror movies I've seen in a really long time. I know it's only March, but this is my favorite movie I've seen all year, no question, and it's going to be really hard to beat. If you're an aspiring filmmaker, even if you don't like horror movies, you should go see this so you can know that you can take the phone in your pocket and make a feature film. Sure, Soderbergh probably had a whole team of lighting and sound people, and he had these extra lenses, but you really don't need them to make a movie of your own. 
If you really want to get started though, I would suggest paying the $100 for the 18 millimeter lens with the case, just so you have two different angles to work with, because you know, that'll just help you differentiate your shots. But yeah, you can make a feature film with a phone, and turns out you can make a pretty good one. But yeah guys, that's all the time I have for today, so if you liked the video, let me know by subscribing, and then just let me know down in the comments what you think of it if you go check it out. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.